Spider Geddon continues. And you know what? If they made Aunt May a spider, and they made Captain George Stacy a spider, well, you know who they can make a spider? Me, Mike Spider Slayer. I'll defeat those inheritors. Hey comic book fans, welcome back to Comic Book Corner 2.0 and fans, you're back with me, Mike Spider Slayer, continuing my coverage of Spider Geddon. Yes, I have promised you the fans to cover each and every issue that has to do with Spider Geddon and all its tie-ins and we're halfway through. So today guys, we're going to be talking about The Vault of Spiders, issue two, and Peter Parker, the spectacular Spider-Man. This is issue 312, that's right fans. So, before we get into Peter Parker's spectacular Spider-Man, let's talk about The Vault of Spiders, issue two. This is that anthology book. This is the book that gives you tales of all the hidden spiders in the universe to go out and destroy the inheritors and you learn about their origins or their little short stories and things of that nature, okay? So this book has a couple of different stories in there. Um, we have Colin Bunn that writes a story. We have Ryan North, Jeffrey Thorne. Um, one story that really stood out in, in this book was actually um, Colin Bunn's story, which I thought was really cool. So the artwork in this book is pretty good. It depends which story you like the best and which artwork you like the best. My favorite artwork in this particular book had to be Mark Bagley's artwork, which was the first story that had to do with Spider's Man. Um, I thought that artwork was gorgeous because we get to see the Goblin, we get to see the Green Goblin, we get to see Jack-O-Lantern in there, Demo Goblin in there. So those pages looked really good and Spider's Man's looked quite interesting too. Um, the artwork when it came to the Aunt May situation when she was a spider ma'am, uh, that was okay. And then you get to the other story where you get um, Captain George Stacy, who's a Spider-Man as well. This was more of a, a darker toned type of artwork, a little more sketchy, things of that nature, but it was okay too. But that first story again was the best. So let's touch on these stories a little bit and then I'll give you my overall thought on this particular issue. So with this book, we get the first story about Spider-Man's, okay? And this was kind of an origin story of where this guy came from. And this guy's playing a major, a more of a major role now in the Spider-Geddon story itself as he's been given an opportunity to work with the Norman Osborn sp uh, spider. So here in this issue, we get his origin story. But before we get that, we get to see that it is called Goblin Knight. And we have all these goblins that are terrorizing people, okay? And then what happens is um, they're, they're supposed to be brought to the Goblin Queen. And we never saw who the Goblin Queen is, but all of a sudden we get this interjection by what you think is Spider-Man at first. And Gwen Stacy is in this issue, and she's like, Spider-Man, thank you for helping me. Thank you, Peter. And he just pushes her away. So in this universe, we wind up getting to see the story of what happened to Peter in this universe. He fell into a pit of actual spiders and he became Spider's Man or Spider-Man's or whatever it is that he's called. It's such a weird name. Uh, but he basically just, I don't know, is a bunch of spiders put together to form his former self. It's just kind of weird and dark and crazy, but it fits Colin Bunn's writing. So really interesting story. Definitely out of all the three stories that are in this book, this one was great. I would love to see a full length story out of this. Okay, and then you get the spectacular Spider-Man, ma'am, sorry, which is Aunt May, who's the actual Spider-Woman here, or old Spider-Ma'am, and uh, there's a team up between her, Uncle Ben, and Peter Parker, and Peter's smart, Ben is guiding her, and it's for her to do this battle against, you know, save the city and do this battle against the Vulture, prevent him from robbing banks and things like that. Okay, story. Little drawn out, longer than what I've liked 
I don't want to see the vulture, two old people fighting each other. It was kind of comical, but uh, it was enough. It was like almost too much of that. And that's all I need is Spider-Man, right? But it's the first appearance, I think, that you ever see Spider or Aunt May as a spider person. So that could be interesting in the future if it takes off. And then last but not least, you get Captain George Stacy, who... Um, uh, goes out and does this battle against uh, which is the shocker in this universe and George Stacy it, it's kind of cool because he wears this black costume um, and I wish the art was a little bit more detailed it was dark it was kind of a painted style and so you couldn't get a really good look at the costume but again you get to see him save Betty Brant from the shocker of this universe's shocker and that was the end of the actual issue so Volta Spiders issue 2 was kind of good um, that first story was great uh, it stood out amongst the rest is it necessary for spider get in as a whole no but if you want to dive deeper into some of the characters that are in there that's why you would pick this up all right so next we're going to talk about peter parker spectacular spider-man issue 312 this was a pretty interesting story as this continues the story of peter parker fighting moreland okay um, this book is written by Sean Ryan, and the art is done by Ryan Fregrary. Um, artwork is really solid in this book. What I like about this book is that Moreland feels like a threatening foe, okay? That's what's great about this book, and that's what spider get in lacks. The inheritors don't feel like they're a threat, but here Moreland does. He wants to stop at nothing to get to Spider-Man. They do this battle. He sucks a little bit of his soul. Spider-Man is beat up. J. Jonah Jameson tries to help Peter Parker the best that he can. And sometimes you feel like that maybe J. Jonah is just in the way. So when Peter Parker finally escapes uh, into the zoo, um, he winds up teaming up with Morales, Miles Morales. And um, we wind up getting... Uh, a solution to their problem on trying to slow down uh, Moreland and then what happens is Peter's like you gotta go out there you gotta fight the good fight Miles you gotta lead them I can't help you here I'm just gonna slow you down I gotta somehow stop Moreland it's just one less inheritor that you have to deal with so Miles goes back to where he comes from and then we see Jay Jonah at the end bring in the SWAT team to try to stop Moreland as well so what did this book accomplish well, the good thing about this one is it tied into spider get in issue three really well. And it kind of made that issue feel complete and it added depth to the story. It added depth to the event. And that's what I can appreciate with this event, what they're doing with at least this tie in here. It gives the event depth. Unlike Infinity Wars, where these Infinity War books, they give nothing to the event whatsoever, okay? So, at the end of the day, by the time I got done reading this book with the great artwork, good dialogue interactions between the characters, um, we get pretty good flashback scenes with Peter um, dealing with certain situations in his past life. Um, I, I give this book probably a four and a half out of five stars. This one was really good. And then when it comes to the Vault of Spiders, I'm going to give that one a three and a half out of five stars. The other two stories were okay. The main, the first story was the great one there. So guys, there you have it. There's my quick rundown on Vault of Spiders issue two and Peter Parker Spectacular issue 312. As I promised... I'm bringing you every issue. Some way or another, I'm going to complete my mission. So guys, as always, thank you so much for watching Comic Book Corner 2.0. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit that notification button so you don't miss a single video from me. And guys, I'll see you on the next comic book review. Take care, fans. Bye.